Welcome to History Uncovered, where we delve into the stories and events that have shaped our world. If you're a fan of history and love learning about the people and events that have shaped our world, then be sure to hit that subscribe button below. We release new videos every day so you'll always have something new to discover. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when our latest episodes are released, and you'll be supporting us in our mission to bring fascinating stories from the past to a wider audience. If you have ideas of what we should make a video about next, let us know in the comment section. In this episode, we will be discussing the life and legacy of Cyrus the Great, one of the most influential figures in ancient history. Cyrus was born in 590 BCE in the region of Persis, which is located in modern-day Iran. He was the son of Cambyses I, a Persian king, and Mandane, the daughter of Astyages, the last Median king. Despite being born into a royal family, Cyrus spent most of his early years as a captive in the court of his grandfather Astyages, who had conquered Persis. Cyrus' time as a captive had a profound impact on him. He learned the customs and ways of the Medes, which would prove invaluable in his later conquests. He also developed a keen sense of justice and fairness, which would be reflected in his enlightened approach to governance. As a young man, Cyrus showed remarkable leadership and military skills, and he soon began to gather a following among the Persian people. In 559 BCE, he launched a rebellion against the Median Empire, and after several years of fighting, he finally defeated his grandfather Astyages and took control of the Median Empire. With the Median Empire under his control, Cyrus turned his attention to the neighboring kingdoms of Lydia and Babylonia. In 546 BCE, he conquered Lydia, which was ruled by King Croesus, and in 539 BCE, he captured Babylonia, which was ruled by King Nabonidus. Cyrus was known for his enlightened approach to governance. Unlike many ancient rulers, he did not impose his culture or religion on the people he conquered. Instead, he allowed them to retain their own customs and beliefs, and he even went so far as to restore the temples and holy places that had been destroyed by previous conquerors. Cyrus was also known for his tolerance and respect for other religions. He allowed the Jews, who had been exiled from Jerusalem by the Babylonians, to return to their homeland and rebuild the Temple of Solomon. This act of generosity is remembered in the Bible as the Edict of Cyrus. The conquest of the Median Empire in 559 BCE was a significant moment in Cyrus the Great's rise to power. At the time, the Median Empire was a powerful kingdom that controlled much of present-day Iran and parts of Central Asia. Cyrus was born into the Persian royal family but was raised as a hostage in the Median court. However, in 559 BCE, he led a rebellion against his grandfather Astyages, the king of the Medes. Cyrus was able to win the support of several Median nobles who were unhappy with Astyages' leadership. In the ensuing battle, Cyrus was able to outmaneuver and defeat Astyages' army. Astyages was captured and deposed, and Cyrus was proclaimed the new king of the Medes. This victory allowed Cyrus to consolidate his power and expand his influence over neighboring kingdoms. The conquest of the Median Empire was a significant turning point in Cyrus' career. It allowed him to establish himself as a major player in the region and laid the foundation for his future conquests. The defeat of Astyages also enabled Cyrus to incorporate the Median army into his own forces, which would prove crucial in his later campaigns. The conquest of Babylonia in 539 BCE was one of Cyrus the Great's most significant military victories. At the time, Babylonia was one of the most powerful kingdoms in the ancient Near East, with a rich cultural heritage and a highly developed civilization. The conquest of Babylonia was a long and difficult campaign that lasted several years. In 539 BCE, Cyrus marched his army into Babylonia and began a siege of the city of Babylon, which was protected by thick walls and a sophisticated system of canals. Despite these defenses, Cyrus was able to find a weakness in the city's defenses. According to some accounts, Cyrus diverted the Euphrates River and was able to enter the city through the dry riverbed. Other sources suggest that the Babylonian king, Nabonidus, had fled the city before Cyrus arrived, allowing the Persian army to enter unopposed. In any case, Cyrus was able to capture Babylon and establish it as the capital of his growing empire. 
He also implemented a policy of religious tolerance, allowing the Babylonians to continue to worship their own gods and maintain their own customs. This policy was in keeping with Cyrus' general approach to governance, which emphasized respect for local traditions and the importance of maintaining stability in conquered territories. The conquest of Babylonia was a major achievement for Cyrus the Great, as it brought one of the most powerful kingdoms in the ancient Near East under his control. It also allowed Cyrus to establish a new center of power in the region and paved the way for his later conquests. Cyrus the Great's untimely death occurred during a military campaign against the Scythians in 530 BCE. The exact details of his death are unclear, and there are several different accounts of what happened. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, Cyrus was killed in battle against the Scythians, who were known for their skill as horse archers. In this version of events, Cyrus was shot with an arrow and died soon after. However, other sources suggest that Cyrus' death was not the result of a battle but rather an accident. One account, attributed to the Babylonian historian Barassus, suggests that Cyrus died while trying to capture a river fortress. According to this account, Cyrus ordered his troops to divert the river so that they could attack the fortress, but the plan backfired and Cyrus was swept away by the raging waters. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his death, Cyrus' legacy as one of the greatest rulers in history endures. His empire lasted for more than 200 years after his death, and his ideas about governance, tolerance, and diplomacy continue to influence leaders to this day. But Cyrus' legacy lived on. His empire, which stretched from the Mediterranean to Central Asia, was one of the largest and most powerful in ancient history. His enlightened approach to governance influenced future rulers, and his tolerance for different cultures and religions set an example for the centuries to come. Cyrus was not only a military genius and a skilled administrator, but also a man who valued education and scholarship. He was said to have founded the first Persian library, which housed thousands of books on various subjects. He was also a patron of the arts and commissioned many impressive works of architecture, including the famous Palace of Persepolis. Furthermore, Cyrus was a master of diplomacy. He used his diplomatic skills to form alliances with neighboring kingdoms, which helped him to expand his empire peacefully. He also practiced a form of diplomacy known as persuasion, which involved convincing his opponents to surrender peacefully rather than resorting to violence. In conclusion, Cyrus the Great was an extraordinary figure whose legacy continues to be felt to this day. He was a military genius, a skilled administrator, and a man of great wisdom and compassion. His enlightened approach to governance, his tolerance for different cultures and religions, and his commitment to education and the arts set an example that would influence future generations. Thank you for watching this episode of History Uncovered. If you found this video informative and engaging, please like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from the past. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications so that you never miss a new video.